on today's World Insight. On a mission to reach the stars, to explore the final frontier, to boldly go where no one has gone before, as China embarks on a journey to deep space. Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight, our special program today, Journey to Deep Space. I'm Tian Wei. Humans have always been fascinated by the unknown, and there is no space we know less about than the great beyond outer space. For better observation, the world's largest telescope located in southwest China called FAST, also known as China's Sky Eye, will be open to the global scientific community. It will accept observation applications from scientists around the world starting from Wednesday. As we look up to the skies, Chinese space engineering are also working around the clock to explore the universe. China's space program carried out 39 launches in the year 2020. In 2021, China will start building its own space station. Several space missions and manned explorations are in the pipeline in the coming year. Recently, I visited a very important entity, which is called Wenchang Spacecraft Launch Site in Hainan. I met this lady, Zhou Chengyu, a space mission subsystem launch commander, whose job is to make that happen. Big sister, Zhou Chengyu is the youngest commander at the Wenchang spacecraft launch site in Hainan. I was born in the the 24-year-old woman was in charge of the rocket connector system of the Chang'e 5 mission, China's third successful moon landing in seven years. From seeking answers to questions to the heavens, on the red planet, to samples gathered from the moon, China had a remarkable year in space. China now has carried out 39 launches so far in 2020. That's more launches than any other nation. For the first time since 2018, 39 launches completed compared with 34 from the U.S., 20 from Russia, and this feat was repeated in 2019. From navigation to communication and Earth observation satellites, space-related tech is slowly fitting pieces of a big puzzle about our place in space. Starting June last year, Hainan province has given full play to a free trade port policy and listed the Wenchang International Space City as one of the 11 key parks of the Hainan free trade port. It's one of the three major science and technology cities covering sea, land, and air. Wenchang International Space City is seen as a busy hub for growing deep space industries. During my visit, the Wenchang spacecraft launch site just successfully launched the Long March 8 rocket. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音> 
as China's fourth and southernmost spacecraft launch site, Wenchang was specially selected for its low latitude zone, which is only 19 degrees north of the equator. The location gives the launch vehicle a performance boost gained from the Earth's rotational speed. The coastal location of the launch complex allows much larger rocket booster segments to be transported from factories. Launches are carried out in a southeast direction into the South Pacific, avoiding the possibility of rocket debris falling into any populated area. In 2021, China will start building its own space station, a big dream and tall order for its makers. On our way back from the launch tower, Cheng Yi shared with me a song from her favorite singer. Under the moonlight, I must keep chasing. There's always a voice saying, don't stop. <laughs> The China Manned Space Agency said with its space station nearly done, several space missions, including the launch of the station's core module, cargo replenishment, and a manned flight will be carried out one after another. Meanwhile, China and Russia have agreed to jointly build a lunar space station that will be open to all countries, according to both sides. No one knows it better than Bao Weimin, the director of science and technology at the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, who's also with the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Let's hear his thoughts on China's new space missions and what it will take to accomplish them all. We understand that China and Russia are working together on the space station. So how should we understand this kind of cooperation? This year, we are entering the launch phase of China's space station, which we also call the construction phase. We will launch the core module next month, then the first group of crew members will enter the space core module in June. So from now until a month from now, as you just said, uh, what is likely to be your major task? After this year's two sessions, our focus will be on the program launch. Our major work is to build the space station. There will be 11 launches, three big launches including the core module, experimental module 1 and experimental module 2, and then to assemble them in space. Launches of four cargo and refueling craft to transport food and equipment to the space station. Also launches of four manned spacecraft to send four kinds of crew members to the space station. The construction of the whole space station may be completed next year. That sounds amazing. Among all of these work, which do you think will be the most challenging? For us, building the space station is a vital and challenging task. After the launch of the core module and work of two crews, we are going to evaluate the operating condition of the core module in orbit. And after that, the third crew will fly to the sky and build the space station. And then the experiment module 1 and experiment module 2 will be launched into space separately, assembled together under their command of the astronauts. This process is the most difficult. So, Mr. Bao, I understand that when China brings back the soil of the moon, we have been hearing um, intentions to cooperate from the U.S. side on that. So, shall we understand that as long as China is making progress and big progress, there will be bigger opportunities for cooperation, even with the United States? Uh, 
After the return of Chang'e 5, many countries want to work with us on the samples from the moon. China will do a study on the samples with other countries. Cooperation in space exploration is a policy in our country for a long time, and we will not change the principle. But at first, we must meet the demand of main research tasks of our own. Meanwhile, there is an approval process for the lunar samples. The research plans proposed by each country can only be carried out after being recognized by experts and relevant departments. I understand. Interesting. Uh, the other thing is about the Mars, uh, the exploration of the Mars. Tianwen, how do you see its mission? How do you assess its performance? Uh, Tianwen 1 is still on the way. Orbiting, landing, and inspecting are all three steps in one go, completing them in one progress, which is China's Mars exploration plan. It is different from those of the United States, Russia, and Europe. The Mars exploration of these countries are separated in different programs. Orbiting, landing, and inspecting, and even sampling return, are carried out separately. We basically combine all steps, and Xianun one can do those jobs. Now the probe is orbiting Mars. After a comprehensive assessment in May or June, we will choose an opportunity to land it on Mars, and the rover will explore the surface. In the future, China will also collect samples and return them to Earth. So I think that China's Mars exploration is only one-third completed, and two-thirds of the mission is waiting for us. We understand the U.S. and some of the others have been, of course, along having the dream of exploring the Mars, and they have already achieved something. So what they have achieved, what does that mean for China? How much uh, inspirations and also, uh, you know, uh, clues uh, for future research directions would they provide uh, to the Chinese scientists? The Mars exploration of the United States and other countries is very meaningful to us. The U.S. has accumulated rich experience in this area, and we can learn from it for our future study. Although there may be many differences in the details, I think the whole picture of their technical roots are very valuable for us. Mm. The other thing is about uh, what you recently suggested, Mr. Bao. Uh, China is working on the Internet satellite and has been testing about it. Tell me more about that. The functions and performance of the spatial Internet and the terrestrial Internet are the same just one in the sky and the other on the ground. The biggest advantage of spatial internet is that it can cover a wider area and can send interconnected information to any location in the world without relying on optical fibers. Use of great significance to the development of China's information industry. The dominance and autonomy of information is very important. We are now doing work to form our own spatial internet. The next step requires the overall planning and arrangement from the national level. The amount of space resources is limited. Viewed from a global perspective, it may be better for countries to work together to build a joint space internet. But, due to various reasons, it is impossible to build just one network around the world now. But it is necessary for one country to build one network. As a large developing country, China has the responsibility to do this well and provide with better spatial information services.
呃做好。呃、uh, ，We understand that during the Cold War there was a lot of competition between the U.S. and the former Soviet Union on the outer space exploration. And now, of course, China and U.S. is at a critical juncture. Nobody knows where it is going, but people are asking the question whether China and U.S. is going to have a space race as they did uh, between U.S. and Soviet Union. Uh, what is your take as a scientist? I think that China's current space exploration and space infrastructure are working for China's development, serving the entire society and even serving the world. Like our Beidou navigation, it serves the world. We do not want competition. We develop space infrastructure for economic development, economic security, and economic and social needs. So, so I think that everyone should be able to be equal, 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 equal. Everyone should explore space based on equality, mutual benefit, and win-win results. Space resources are the same as the CBD of a city. They are limited. China calls for the global development and use of limited resources. Let's not use the word competition, but the term win-win. Science knows no borders. We hope to explore, develop, and build space with more scientists in the world. Thank you so much, Mr. Bao, for taking your time and talking to us. Really appreciate it. And you're watching a World Inside special, Journey to Deep Space. Coming up, China's new space mission to boldly go where no one has gone before. What will it take to accomplish it? We'll be back with answers. From the moon go to deep space, to Mars, to asteroid and uh, Jupiter and Saturn and uh, to the founder of the solar system. Welcome back. This is World Inside special program, Journey to Deep Space. I'm Tian Wei. China has steadily made progress on humanity's last frontier. In 2013, China became the third country to successfully make a soft landing on the moon with its Chang'e 3 rover. Six years later, in 2019, Chang'e's fourth landing on the dark side of the moon is a milestone in exploring our nearest celestial neighbor up close. Last year, China's Chang'e 5 returned to Earth with more than 1,000 grams of lunar soil, making China only the third country to ever do that. China's mission to the moon has brought a lot of beautiful surprises, and now China is working on going to Mars, and at the same time sending people to the International Space Station. On that, I talked to Xu Yan Song, the Director General of the Asia-Pacific Space Cooperation Organization, to find out more about how China plans to reach its space dreams and how the Asia-Pacific region is working together as partners toward that goal. Take a look. Where is China? On the moon, on the Mars? Well, we can see a collective number of nations that is uh, doing their effort going to Mars with the U.S. Uh, effort, with the UAE, and with Chinese Tianwen, uh, all successfully inserted to the Mars orbit and with some of the landing success. And we're very pleased to see that. Uh, where China is doing uh, is approach uh, through moon to Mars. Uh, this moon endeavor, including uh, three stages, which has been successfully completed, including orbiting, landing, and sample return. Uh, the sample return was outstanding uh, in recent months, and we have very uh, pleased to, to notice that uh, it has also re uh, received the highest uh, praise from the nation. When it comes to China's ability of innovation, where is it? We do see a number of uh, uh, comments and uh, some uh, opinions saying that uh, we have been to Mars and been to the moon. Uh, why do it again? So uh, the Chinese endeavor is to find opportunities of innovative ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, we have landed, uh, before landing mission, we have the Chang'e 1 and 2 mission, uh, which are both uh, orbiting missions. But the Chang'e 2 mission take the opportunity of rerouting and repurpose that spacecraft 
to study an asteroid that's uh, more than one billion miles away. So that is one innovation point of the orbiting phase. Uh, we're at the landing phase. We have Chang'e 3 successfully landing on the near side of the moon. So we have rerouted and repurposed the Chang'e 4 to an international cooperation project where it will be landed on the far side of the moon. Mm -hmm. And that was also successful. And also based on that, we have also land, uh, launched a relay satellite uh, that is orbiting on the far side of the moon to relay data back to Earth. Now, as you might know that the far side of the moon cannot be communicated directly. So the satellites as well as the landing process was all very innovative ideas and was not done before. Mr. Xu, what do you expect likely to be the next few steps and whether they are significant in terms of uh, Mars exploration? Well, the next step, uh, obviously, we have successfully inserted uh, the Tianwen-1 into orbit. Uh, it comprises uh, three parts, the orbiter, the lander, and the rover itself. Uh, right now, three are flying together in the same formation in the highly elliptical orbit. The closest point of the Tianwen-1 to, to Mars is 288 kilometers. So we're using that opportunity to imaging the ground uh, to, hi uh, to uh, highlight and uh, uh, to choose the right uh, landing point. Uh, once that is done, we will further uh, val validate this uh, telemetry tracking and control system and also uh, validate the communication system so that we can deploy the lander in uh, late May and early June. We see some very specific steps taken by China and the United States, for example, about the exploration of Mars. Um, almost every step of the way, in terms of public exposure, there is an apparent competition going on. So I really wondered, uh, Mr. Xu, from your perspective, where is this competition leading us to? Well, I think uh, competition will bring uh, the best out of each partners. And uh, this is also true for the U.S. and it's true for China. What's the best that the U.S. has already shown as a result of this? What is the best that China has shown as a result of this? The cutting edge technology that we have. For example, we do not have communications beyond the moon before. Um, any communication beyond that distance is uh, innovative for China. And also for, for Mars missions, uh, the lander and the rover on self, uh, the, the, uh, space, uh, the sky crane, that they call it, has all the control technologies. And once landed, the, uh, uh, the power system uh, that is using radioactive acetope to heat up the battery every night and rove uh, during the day. And using all the uh, sophisticated equipments on board uh, the rover, uh, as well as to collect the samples mm -hmm. and locate those samples, maybe return them back to Earth in the future. These are unprecedented for the human resource and human beings. And uh, I always say that we will become interplanetary species when we, once we live on another planet. Mm -hmm. So Mars could be the first step to do that revolution. So it, for revolutions, you need uh, innovation, you need new ideas, and you need cutting edge technologies. All of this will be combined during the competition process and during the cooperation process. We, once we all have these uh, capabilities of going that same destination, we will naturally combine our efforts. Mm. Interesting when you say we will naturally combine our efforts. Is it really going to be natural? Uh, it is uh, politically uh, difficult, but um, we are evolving. We are having new innovative ideas and pragmatic approaches. Um, with different political scenarios, uh, there will be mergers and uh, cooperations mm -hmm. uh, in the whole course of competitions. Competition can exist on Earth, but outer space, we should all have cooperations. This is true for the International Space Station, where all nations working and living in the same confined uh, uh, spaces. But for exploration of interplanetary missions, uh, efforts should be combined. So where is China? Still my question. You know, if there is something like uh, a few mountains, uh, where is China? Where's the United States? Where's Japan? Where's India? Some of your other members? How would you help us to paint that picture? The many ways of, of evaluating a country space capabilities. One of them is the number of launches. Mm -hmm. uh, former Soviet Union, uh, U.S. had more than 1,000 launches already. 
but China is in the 200 and 300 category. Uh, however, China is, is rapidly growing. Uh, for example, last year we had 39 launches, mm -hmm. but I always say 40 launches because there is one launch from the lunar surface back to the lunar orbit by the Ch uh, Chang'e 5. That is another launch. Right. So it's 40 launches last year, number one in the world. And this year we're expecting about the same categories and same, same number. So the number of launches means that we have a very robust and um, ambitious uh, space project. Uh, along with the economy growing, uh, I believe that uh, we're catching up very quickly. So uh, first, first uh, the number of, in terms of in-orbit facilities and infrastructures, we, we say number of satellites operational in orbit. Uh, U.S. has more than 500, uh, China more than 200. Mm -hmm. So the, the others are smaller numbers, around 100 and lower. So in, in terms of launching capabilities, uh, launching uh, frequencies, uh, satellite operating uh, numbers and infrastructures. I would say China in space sector is, uh, is very good in number two and number three uh, position. Mm -hmm. But uh, subtleties in, in particular, uh, particular areas of space technology, maybe we're a little bit behind, but uh, scale-wise, we're quite, uh, quite robust. Fascinating stuff, really. Um, but you know, on the cooperation side, what is the state of cooperation among your members right now? What are some of the most promising and pioneering directions you're looking at? Well, uh, as Asia Pacific's cooperation organization, we're doing mostly uh, space application cooperations and uh, educational cooperations. We have education projects um, uh, of all member countries that can send faculties and students to the nations that have comp competence and capability of uh, degree education and short-term trainings. Uh, in addition to that, also we have uh, three or more most prominent projects, mm -hmm. one of them being the earthquake prediction project using the satellite uh, Zhangheng number one uh, for aeronospheric studies. Uh, these aeronospheric uh, anomalies has a very subtle connection with the earthquake uh, uh, precursor. So that um, once that problem is solved, mm -hmm. where we would be able to have a very good early warning uh, of earthquakes. So yeah. even a few minutes would be significant for the human safeties and, and properties. Other projects, including a, a Apostles project, mm -hmm. this project using a ground-based telescope to observe the space debris, so that we can have a connection of all members. Uh, each country will have a telescope that form a network of observations, therefore enhancing the capabilities of observations. Uh, other than that, also we have data service uh, sharing platform. This uh, platform shares the satellite data among all member countries for uh, agricultural, forestry, environmental, and disaster purpose. We uh, take the form of uh, common destinations. Um, we, we take the call of that as also um, we take approaches to realize that uh, by sharing all the resource and technologies and projects together. And uh, that uh, not only uh, space technology, but also scientific missions, applications uh, of uh, remote sensing data, uh, earthquake predictions mm -hmm. and disaster mitigations, as well as education and training resources. All of these are to bring the capacity of member states up to a level that they can start their own projects and space programs. So this is very true uh, for some of the uh, old partners of China. Uh, for example, Brazil, they develop their space capabilities through the CBS, CBS projects. And our member countries, uh, some of them have uh, space capabilities and competence, manufacturing satellites, launching their own uh, satellites into orbit. And uh, these are true for Turkey, for Iran, for Pakistan. Mm -hmm and Thailand. So many countries do have competence. And in this process, we try to enhance these competence instead of uh, telling them to, uh, to choose a stand uh, where it will work with. I think uh, cooperation is more extensive rather than exclusive. After more than a decade of lunar exploration, a new frontier deep space exploration is now on China's national agenda. But you know, it's not just about strategic issue. It's also an issue about science, about how human being is related to the great 
universe. On that, I talked to Wu Ji, who's both a science fiction writer and former director general of the National Space Science Center of Chinese Academy of Sciences. Congratulations on your book, uh, Lunar Hotel. Wow, that's uh, quite a popular book, not only in China, but also uh, in other parts of the world now. Yes, uh, it was uh, published uh, one year ago in, in Chinese uh, version. Uh, so I have a very good friend. Uh, he uh, uh, volunteered to translate it into uh, French, uh, L'Hotel de la Mer, de Plus. Let me ask you, Mr. Wu, about some of the latest development in deep exploration. You've been arguing through China's the two sessions that it is extremely crucial. Tell me why. Yes, deep space exploration is a, is a new area for China. We have initiated a lunar exploration uh, about 15 years ago, 16 years ago. Uh, then we succeed with uh, three steps, uh, orbiting the, the moon and landing on the moon and the sample return from the moon. We have just uh, obtained uh, 1,700 uh, grams uh, lunar soil uh, from the moon. So this was uh, mm. very successful. And uh, for, the, for the near future, we are going to go out from the moon, go to deep space, to Mars, and even uh, further to asteroid and uh, Jupiter and Saturn and uh, to the founder of the solar system. So that will be our plan uh, in the next uh, 15 years. Several other countries are also coming in. Uh, of course, uh, United States is the leading uh, force in deep space exploration. They have uh, launched uh, many missions to Mars, very successful missions to Mars. Uh, and uh, recently, uh, beside the uh, United States, uh, European Space Agency, Russian, uh, Japan, uh, India, and even the UAE, uh, United Arab uh, uh, Emirates, they also uh, have their uh, Mars missions. So uh, uh, China would like to be uh, one member of this club. And this, this is uh, uh, very uh, exciting for the, for the younger generation of China. So they are looking forward to the outer space. But some could argue, Mr. Wu, you could well put the money into deep sea exploration, uh, into other areas that would bring, in fact, uh, uh, similar opportunities for further exploration about the world and also the byproduct, scientific byproduct that would benefit uh, both China and the world. So why uh, is China, as everybody else, so fascinated by the outer space? Um, we could well do it on the other directions. When we say deep space exploration or space science, uh, it, it's just one more dimension. Uh, it doesn't mean it will replace the deeper sea exploration. So uh, China is uh, the economic uh, quantity of China is larger now. So there, there's a possibility mm. to cover all these areas. So we should not miss deep space e exploration. Uh, on the other hand, when you look at the, the universe, you will think of, think of yourself. For example, if you go to the moon, and when you're standing on the moon, you're looking back to our Earth, you will see uh, the Earth is it, so beautiful. You, you will look at yourself from another point of view, from universe, look at yourself. So the human beings are really uh, one, uh, uh, with one shared uh, future. Uh, you don't see any boundary of mm -hmm. countries. You, you, you don't really like people are fighting on the Earth because Earth is so beautiful and you feel you have to protect it. So when you go out, you have different feelings. Yeah. And if you go further out, outside of the solar system, you will think about, uh, is there any other in intelligent life there? So if there's other intelligent life there, how could we communicate? Can we learn something from them? So all this open human beings mind and for young people, this is a trigger for them to, to think about the earth, the human beings, uh, the future, their future. So it's much wider mm -hmm. uh, uh, dimension uh, for the young people. 
Mr. Wu, there's also the question about you know, science fiction decades ago, for example, many of the things they described and now have become true. And uh, people are wondering whether the science fictions, uh, a lot of the stories within it today will eventually become the realities of tomorrow. And therefore they say, oh, maybe scientists, a uh, science fiction writer, some of them could even, uh, in a way, uh, being profit, as they say. Uh, what do you mean, how do you see this kind of uh, discussion? Yes, it is true. Uh, in the science fiction, there are there are one branch. It's called near future science fiction. So uh, uh, when you, when you talk about near future science fiction, is uh, when the when the writer writes it, they have an idea of uh, what uh, could be realized in the near future, fifty years, one hundred years. So, uh, but uh, when the development uh, when the Science and technology developed so fast uh, as what uh, we, are, yeah. we are facing now. Uh, some uh, 50 years of fiction can be true in 20 years. So uh, it can really help people to realize uh, with, with the modern technology to realize it faster. So what I am writing in, uh, in the book, uh, Lunar Hotel, uh, uh, all the technology there is almost ready. Although you don't see them right now, but uh, there's no uh, no blockage to realize them. It's only money. It's it's only time. So uh, those things uh, can be realized uh, faster. Uh, maybe in 20 years we will build uh, not only Chinese. Other people will build a hotel on the moon. Uh, this can be uh, even faster. Mm. So I'm predicting uh, 20 years, uh, but maybe yeah. it can be realized in 15 years. So with the fast development, so you have right. to you don't really uh, okay uh, writing uh, nothing is something it can be uh, realized. Mm. Uh, from the real future now back to reality, uh, uh, from from scenarios now, pr uh, Professor Wu now come to reality. China has been working on the innovation area has been encouraging. Uh, innovation uh, from the country itself. How do you see the realities that China is facing and the necessities of doing it? We are in a period of, uh, of a new era. We, after uh, uh, this uh, uh, 13, 13th of five years plan, we are now opening a new chapter of a 14th five years plan. And China is aiming to be a uh, uh, within the front row of uh, innovative country in, in 2035. So in 15 years, China will be more advanced. Uh, all this will encourage the young people, the young generation, and of, of course, including us, uh, to do uh, uh, much better. And uh, in the past uh, 20 years, we are, most of the time, we are following the advanced technology of the world. We are learning, we are following, we even sometimes copy. But now we we feel that we have to invent something. We have to create something. So innovation is uh, much uh, important for us. If we don't innovate, if we don't uh, create uh, new frontiers, uh, we cannot move forward because we are almost there. Huh? We are almost very close to the frontiers. So we have to lead the world. China is uh, has a responsibility to lead. Mm. And now, of course, there's the issue of kabos, isn't it? Uh, mainly uh, that China, as a result of geopolitics and many other reasons, will be not necessarily having access to some of the latest uh, uh, technologies. Uh, Mr. Wu, how do you see this reality? And what do you think are the most urgent issues that China really have to work on in order to uh, uh, overcome this difficult period of time? Uh, it is true that uh, there are some countries in the world. Uh, I, I, I should say United States is, is the leading country to block China uh, in, in the area. I am working space technology, space science and technology. We have been blocked by the U.S. for 20 years. They have uh, they had a, a called a war for uh, 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 law. Uh, from the Congress, they block China, block, block their own scientists and industry to collaborate uh, with China in space mm. uh, technology, even space science. Uh, when we go to an international conference, 
uh, we cannot talk with uh, with the NASA people, with the U.S. people, uh, space people, uh, you know, bilaterally. They have to, when we talk, they have to ask the third party mm. to come, uh, a, a European or a Japanese to come and make it uh, multilateral. If we talk uh, uh, only bilateral, mm. they are breaking their laws. But for China, we are open. There's no problem mm. for us. We, we, talk, we can talk with them. So uh, we have been blocked by the U.S. for more than uh, 15 years, but still we are developing. So it's not a threat. It, it's, uh, it will give us some difficulties, but uh, finally we can, we can go forward, no problem. We, we will not stop there. We will not, because of this, we will not uh, stop uh, with our development. For example, the recent uh, completement of uh, navigation system, of Chinese navigation system, Beidou system. All the components on board of the satellite mm -hmm. are made in China. So we can do that uh, within, with, uh, by our, our own technology. My conversation with Wu Ji, both a science fiction writer and a key person in China's journey to explore the outer space. That's all we have for today's special program, Journey to Deep Space. If you'd like to see more Search World Inside or check out our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for watching and bye for now.